Okay. Chemo selectivity. Aldehydes and ketones. We know aldehydes are more reactive than ketones because of sterics and hyperconjugation, but a reactive nucleophile like sodium borohydride doesn't care. It reduces both of them. So what can we do? We can actually use these acetal protecting groups to mask the aldehyde, do our chemistry on our ketone, and then deprotect and get our aldehyde back. That's called chemoselectivity. This, ac this acid and out diol will protect this, which will make it not reactive towards sodium borohydride. We can do our reaction with the ketone, and then take it off, and we got our aldehyde back. So let's take a look at the mechanism for that, for that first protection. All right, so that first mask we're putting on, we're using our diol. All right, our dial here, NH+, and because our aldehyde is more reactive, we're going to get it protected. All right, we're going to put this on there. So the first step, we're in acid, so we're going to, we know the aldehyde is more reactive, we're going to protonate. All right, the first step is going to be protonation in acidic conditions. Always use that acid first, H+. That's going to make the aldehyde carbon that much more reactive, or right, the carbon of the aldehyde. The alcohol is going to come in and react and add in. Right, so that adds in. We're going to get a tetrahedral intermediate. When you have a tetrahedral intermediate, you always ask yourself, do I have a good leaving group? You do. It's actually the first thing you just, it's just the thing you just added with the plus charge, but that would be non-productive. We want to add that, so we need to lose this. So we're going to do a proton transfer. So that's going to protonate that alcohol, and we're going to get that to leave. So you can actually show arrows for that, or if you just want to be a little lazy, just write PT for proton transfer, right? Because there's obviously probably other molecules floating around that help shuttle these hydrogens around. But if you want to be lazy, just write PT. It's okay with me, All right? So you got something like this. So you have another, tetra it's still a tetrahedral intermediate. And if you have a tetrahedral intermediate, you ask yourself, do I have a good leaving group? And of course you do have a good leaving group here. So we want to use the lone pairs to make things go away. So we make a pi bond and kick out that water. So after the tetrahedral immediate collapses, we kick out water. Now we have, a again, an oxygen as a plus charge. This is pretty reactive. The other oxygen from the diol, from the starting diol, is going to come in. Add in. I'm not such a big swoop, but it'll get there. The key here, when, I'm, when most people will mess up, there's two things. They'll forget to collapse it, use the lone pairs to kick things out, right? So they'll, or they'll forget charges. A lot of times people forget charges. So now you're here, and of course we should go back to the beginning, right? H plus is a catalyst, so we know we're not done until we've regenerated H plus. So the last step is just a deprotonation, and the H plus can just fall off. And that gets us to the protected uh, aldehyde, with the ketone still there. All right, so now we have our protected aldehyde. We're going to react with sodium borohydride. So now, essentially, this has rendered this aldehyde not electrophilic. It's not as reactive, right? It doesn't have a pi bond anymore. Right? We all talk about pi bonds. are, are le There's less orbital overlap, so those are actually more reactive, weaker bonds. So our, our H- minus here can react, and we can reduce the ketone. So that gets us that this protection had allowed us to react the ketone and not the aldehyde. So now once we're done with this, though, right, we, now we want to get rid of the mask and deprotect. So how does that work? So what's going to happen for this deprotection, we need to get rid of the mask. So similarly how we've usually been protonating the carbonyls, now we're going to protonate part of the mask. Right? So that's going to make it more reactive. So we protonated the mask, and again, this is one of those things where what well, people will usually forget, they'll forget charge, and they'll forget to use the lone pairs to kick out. Right? This is like a tetrahedral intermediate. Right? That's a tetrahedral carbon, that's SP3 hybridized. Use your lone pairs to kick out a good leaving group. All right, so we've broken off. This oxygen has came off. We're back now. We're back to kind of this common intermediate. You've seen this before when we were doing the protection. We had this intermediate, and this came in and reacted. 
But now, since we're in water, there's a lot of water around, and we're trying to get this off. All right, we're using, these are all equilibrium arrows. So we're just using Le Chatelier's principle somewhat. The water that's been floating around is now going to add in, right? Just because there's a lot of it, right? It's going to make an addition. So we're going to make a tetrahedral intermediate again here. Now our water is added in. We have a tetrahedral intermediate. We ask ourselves, we have a tetrahedral intermediate. Do I have a good leaving group? We do have a good leaving group, but it's water. We just added water. So we don't want that to leave. We need to do what? Proton transfer, shift the proton around to make this, right? This is the piece we're trying to kick out. So we're gonna do a proton transfer. All right, so we've done our proton transfer. So we should write, if we don't show the mechanism arrows, we need to put PT, proton transfer. You could show the mechanism arrows if you want to. Now we have a tetrahedral intermediate again. Again, what should we use? We should use our lone pairs. If you wanna be even super lazy, I'll show you the faster version. Save you one step. You could take that OH bond electrons and have them go down and kick that out. So at the exact same time, you're both making the product. That's the aldehyde. Off came the diol and that H plus is also there. So H plus is this H plus that fell off at the same time. So if you want to save one step, you could save one step right here. Instead of using the lone pair there, you could use the OH electrons, OH bond electrons to get to this right away and regenerate your catalyst.